for the introduction and glad to be here this time from far away uh, and Shana Tova to everybody. Um, so yes, yeah, so as Steffi mentioned, um, I'm the CEO. Today we're called Simply Good. This is our brand name, a company that grows fresh spirulina for food. But most important of all, I'm a father of three youngsters, eight and a half, five and a half, and three and a half. Those are the ones that keep me driving. Those are the ones who every morning that I wake up to do what I do, I keep on thinking what type of world we're living them. And this is what I would want to talk to you to do today. So let's talk about change. Uh, food system has seen some great achievements in feeding the world's growing population in the last decades, but we will be unable to sustainably support the global population of tomorrow. We need to build a sustainable food system where the growing, eating and disposal of food creates net benefits for the economy, people and the environment itself. So as we go on, we need to consider the challenges that are ahead of us. So it's imperative to understand that the statistics say that by 2050, we must find a way to feed more than 9 billion people. I'll repeat that, 9 billion people. In order to do that, we need to keep in mind that sustainability and health need to be at the forefront of whatever we do to solve this issue. Without addressing those issues and without understanding this today, at this present moment, we won't be able to touch ground and solve this. So let's talk a bit about a vision, a vision for transformation. Uh, what can we actually do? So a vision that would strive towards having a global food system which is renewed, which is new, which is good for everybody, has to be, first of all, inclusive. It has to have all the smallholder farmers, including women, young people, fully integrated into the food systems and having access to financing, insurance, transport, education, mechanization, leasing and storage. All those have to be addressed. Businesses, governments, organizations, and other food system stakeholders effectively need to provide those farmers and those people with the infrastructure policies and regulation and services that they will need in order to thrive. Secondly, we need sustainability for that vision, with the knowledge, desire, and means to make eco-friendly decisions. Consumers' focus needs to be on purchasing food with minimum environmental impact. Sustainably grown foods have to be universally affordable to everybody. Retailers have to be incentivized to stock eco-friendly foods. It's a big change. Companies and farmers share more information than ever about their sustainable practices and their reputation benefits, conscience of the land's value and what it gives. Farmers can deploy different practices that reduce the environmental damage that we're having today, while countries as governments meticulously monitor their food systems, environmental impact, land rights, and plan of the use of land. That vision also has to be efficient, okay? Not only uh, the last two that I talked about, but it has to be efficient. And efficiency is super important for us to succeed in that. Food has to be produced in the right way, sorry. Food has to be produced in the right way and in the most efficient way, okay? In order to give us the variety that is required and the amounts that is required for us to feed a growing world, okay? Little is lost or goes to waste. Any food that is not consumed is delivered to those in need, reused and recycled. Government policies positively need to influence the decision-making of all actors towards common objectives. Land and other resources are used for the full potential. Now, last but not least, the fourth part of this vision has to be a nutritious and healthy food. The triple burden of malnutrition, when we're talking about malnutrition, we're talking about undernourishment, micronutrient deficiencies, and overnutrition is reduced as everyone have access to nutritious food and follows a healthy diet. Enjoying better nutrition, adults will live longer, okay, and have healthier lives, and children will grow up to reach their full potential. Moreover, food is safe. People have better visibility of their sources and ingredients of food they buy, and therefore make better decisions for themselves and for the planet as well. Now, it's not only about the 90,000 feet speaking about food. I would like to take you into one example when we're talking about my industry, which is the alternative protein industry and the livestock issue. So when we talk about changing the world, we need to understand that what one of the most impactful areas is food and how it's grown, processed and marketed. Together with mobility, okay, we're talking at the moment about about the second largest source of emissions, 10 gigatons of 
uh, emissions annually, together with housing, okay, which basically means food, housing, and mobility, it holds 70% of all gas emissions. And the future? Think of 10 billion people. How are we going to do that? How are we going to feed all that? How are we going to sustain a planet and not harm it that much with all those emissions? If we tackle the food challenge, we can benefit mankind on a very high scale. Now, the dramatic footprint of food systems need to be understood. Approximately 500 million smallholder farmers produce 80% of food consumed in the developing world. 80%. Food systems are currently responsible for 20 to 30 percent of global greenhouse emissions. 70 percent of freshwater withdrawals, okay, comes from livestock. 70 percent of biodiversity loss also comes from that. We have to tap into those. We have to change those, and we have to really, really, really think on how we're going to change our way of behaving, working, producing, consuming food. Now. When we're talking about change, and we have to talk about change because this is what we're here to do, okay? We're not here to complain about what's gone bad along the decades because we've done good. What we have done was fine until today, but from now onwards, we need to change our ways. For that, we need to speak about change in a positive way. For that, um, we need to understand that um, we have three main pillars that we would want to touch into, okay? Uh, the World Economic Forum recognized three pillars, that if we tap into them and start changing them, our food system will be different, okay? The first one, the first one will be regenerate nature, okay? Food has to be produced in ways that regenerate nature and don't harm it, okay? First, we must change what we grow and how we grow it. The industrialization of agriculture has led to over 75% of food coming from just 12 different planets and five different animal species. That doesn't make sense. Without change, the dangers to human health and to the planet cannot be overstated. Second pillar for change, nearly one third of global food production, that's 1.3 billion tons of food is lost along the supply chain, wasted by consumers or retailers. We must reduce the vast amounts of food we currently lose at all stages, from the field, by the way, to the fork. If current levels of food and lost waste were a country, by the way, it would have been the third largest greenhouse emission gas emitter in the whole entire world. By tackling this problem right now, we can make huge progress towards mitigating climate change. Third, we need to talk about recycling and reusing. Less than 2% of the valuable nutrients that are in the food byproducts that are being pushed inside the cycle are not being reused they're being thrown away. Um, we need to find innovative, new ways to use those products and resources and to use them productively. That will be an, an, an amazing environmental and socioeconomic win-win for us all, but also for the planet. Now, I would like to take you for a drill down on an example on how we do things um, to better understand um, the whole environment of where we stand. So we understood the problem, we understood the challenge, we've seen where the focus has to be, we understood the pillars that need to be constructed for the change to happen. Okay, now let's look at how we're doing it differently, maybe it's simply good. So what do we actually do? Well, we turn this green thing that you see over there into one of the most healthiest and sustainable foods products on the planet. We turn fresh spirulina into food. Our product, which is a bacteria, which is a cyanobacteria, it's an algae, holds more than 74% protein, it has full amino acid scope, and holds all the nutrients you might need or need or, or think that you would want. And the trick is that you eat the whole thing. There is no extraction and there is no waste in what we do. Now that's innovation. Not only that, we are probably the best and most efficient converter of sun to protein. We grow in the desert and use the same land to grow food and actually double our biomass every 24 hours. That's every 24 hours harvesting and making more food. No need for a lot of terrain. We don't harm the land in the process. We actually work above it in closed water pools. 98% of our water are recycled back into the system. Now that's circular economy. All the residues and leftovers that are left, those are minerals and salts, which are all food grade okay, from the harvesting, are being circulated back into the pools and are being reused. Most of the process is automatic, therefore very, very, very low intensity on labor side. And when people are talking about carbon taxation in Europe and in the United States, 
we're actually capturing carbon and making food out of it. Not only that, we're doing pilots with industry leaders on input side and on the output side. On the input, if you can give us carbon, we know how to make food out of it and how to produce oxygen out of it. And not only that, if you are a food and drink, beverage, beverage and food company, for example, beer, the residues that you have that are left over once you finish producing your final product, the residues that you pay a lot of money to get rid of, this is the food ingredient to what we do. We can take that and make food out of it. Not only that, on the output, not on the input side, once we empty one of our pools, okay, it is probably one of the best fertilizers you can find on earth. It has all the nutrition you might want to grow anything on earth. All we need to do is just think of a way to package it and ship it away. So that's circular economy in our kind of mindset. To take it up a notch, circular economy for us is a mindset first and foremost. That mindset leads us to the creation of new technologies that allow us to bring to the market mind-blowing products. Our texture and color technologies both utilize this mindset. This is what you see over here. Um, the texture is 100% spirulina. This is on the left side. But as you can see, it's a chunk. That chunk acts like meat or fish in texture and in bite. And it is actually superior in health to the original products. The color in your right side is also 100% spirulina. No additives, no nothing, but an original pigment that grows inside our spirulina. As you can see, this mindset, together with the right technology, allows us to break barriers that haven't been passed before while building new, healthier, more sustainable and clean label products that have zero waste. So who said you can't grow salmon in the desert? This is the final call for action. We have to change the way we produce food and consume food right now. We will not have a better time to do that. The future is simply good. Thank you very much.